Hi everyone, I'm Eddie Vascoro. Welcome again to MA3051. In this section, we are going to discuss about walk, connectivity, and cycle. We start with the definition. A walk from V0 to VK of length K is a sequence of vertices and edges alternately such that EI is an edge joining uh, the vertices VI minus 1 and VI. This work we denote by phi naught phi kw with uh, phi naught is the initial uh, vertex and then phi k is the 10 minus vertex and the vertices phi 1 phi 2 up to phi k minus 1, uh, minus 1 we call the internal vertices uh, of the walk w and k is the length of the walk we call w is a closed walk if v not equal v k. This is the example. The red one yeah, is a closed walk from five to five. Yeah, so we go this way, and then this way, and then we go to one. We go to two, three, and five. Yeah, and w is called a trail if all edges are distinct. Yeah? This is one of the example. We have a trail from 1 to 6. We go to through uh, this uh, edge and then go to this vertex. Go this uh, to 3 and then to 4, 5 and then to uh, 6. Yeah? And all edges in this walk are distinct. So we have a trail here. And then W is called a path if all now is if all vertices are distinct. This is one of the example, a path from one to three. So we go this way. Yeah? So the we have uh, all vertices are different, are distinct. And then we call W is a cycle of if uh, this walk is a closed trail. Yeah. So that means all vertices are distinct. And then this is one of uh, the example. And also edges are distinct. This is one of the example. So we have a, a cycle. This is a length of three. Yeah. And now uh, I like to define a distance. Uh, between one vertex to another in uh, our graph, which is uh, the length of a shortest walk, yeah, uh, from this vertex to the other vertex, yeah. So this is the distance u to v, u to v. That means the length of the shortest uh, uh, path from u to v. This is the example. The distance from one to four is uh, 2 because uh, we have uh, shortest walk here this is uh, length of 2 yeah and now two vertices x and y are connected we, we say connected if there is a walk or a path from x to y uh, ng yeah and then the relation of connection here, we are going to prove that this is a equivalent relation on the set of vertex of G. Why? We can check right now. Okay, first this connection satisfies uh, this property, reflexive uh, property. Because if uh, x, uh, of course, x uh, con connected uh, with x, because there is a zero length uh, walk from x to x. And then satisfy the symmetry property. 
here if x is connected to 1 and then y is also connected to uh, x. So that means if you have a walk from x to y, so exactly we also have a walk yeah, from y to x. Yeah? Because this uh, graph is an uh, undirected graph. And then satisfy the transitive property. We have uh, f x connected to y. So that means there's a walk from x to y. And then uh, y connected to uh, z. We have a walk from z to, uh, to y, uh, from y to z. Then we have a walk uh, from x to z through y here. Yeah? So that means x are connected to z. So these three properties are satisfied, then the connection relation uh, is uh, equivalent relation. So in this case, the set of vertex of G will be partitioned by this relation. Let's say we have a partition V1, V2, up to Vk. Just that uh, U and V are connected if and only if both yeah, uh, U and V uh, belong to some uh, VI here. So the subgraph induced by V1, V2 up to Vk, we call uh, components, the components of G. Yeah? And then omega G, uh, is the number of uh, components. So this is a symbol of the number of the components of G. And we say G is connected if G has only one component. Otherwise, we call graph G is disconnected. This is example. Uh, on the right side here, we have a disconnected graph with uh, three components. This is the first component, second component, and this is the third component. And then below, we have a graph with uh, one component, so we call this graph is a connected graph. Now, we have this lemma. The number of walks from Vi to Vj of length k in our graph G uh, will be equals to the entry uh, in the position IJ uh, of the matrix uh, AK here, A to the power of K. So we are going to prove this lemma by induction. Suppose it's true for K equal capital K then now consider the entry IG uh, in the matrix of A capital uh, A uh, to the power capital K plus one. Yeah? From the matrix multiplication, we know that to get uh, the entry IG in this matrix, actually we have to uh, multiply the row i in a to the, uh, to the power of k yeah, with the column j from the matrix a, right? So in that case, we have this expression. So by induction hypothesis, this entry will represent the number of walks of length k from i to h, right? And then this entry, a h j, uh, can be either 0 or 1. Yeah? So uh, altogether, the sum of this multiplication uh, will be giving us the number of walks of length k plus 1 joining from uh, vertex v i to vertex v j. Okay, so we Prove this lemma. Now I recall again the definition of cycle. A cycle here is a closed trail 
whose origin and internal fat disease are distinct. Yeah? And then uh, this is a symbol of cycle of length K. And if K is odd, then we call C here a odd, an odd cycle. Yeah? And if K is even, we call C is an even cycle. For k equal 3, this c, this cycle, we call it a triangle. Now we are going to prove this theorem. G is bipartite if and only if G has no odd cycle. For first part, we are going to prove from left to right. So now we have uh, G is a bipartite and let its and y are the uh, parted sets of G and let C be a cycle in uh, G here. Without loss of generality, we may assume that V0 is in X, then V1 will be in Y because G is bipartite. And V2 will be in X, and in general, we have V even will be in X, and V uh, odd will be in Y, right? Since uh, V not in X, and VT, this is VT, because this is T, yeah, in Y, then T will be uh, odd. Um, odd number. So, we can conclude that C must be even cycle. Therefore, we can uh, conclude that if G is bipartite, then G contain only uh, even cycle. Yeah? Now, we are going to prove from right to left. Let G be a graph with no odd cycles. Yeah, in this case, we suffice to assume that G is connected and having no odd cycle. Now, choose any vertex U and G and define the partition X and Y as follow. X is the set of all vertices yeah, with distance even from U, and then Y is the set of all vertices with distance out from U. Now we are going to show G is bipartite. Let us consider two vertices here, V and W in X. Yeah. So now <clears throat> because G is connected, we have a path, a shortest path from U, from U, this vertex, to V. Yeah? We call it this path is P, and then a shortest path, another shortest path from U to W, uh, we call it P here. Yeah? And then assume that U1 is the last common vertex yeah, in P and Q. So we have this uh, situation in these pictures. So we have this is uh, P, yeah? uh, path P, and then the red one is path uh, Q. Yeah? And U1 is uh, the last common vertex yeah? between these two, uh, these two uh, paths. Now, uh, consider this the subpath of P and of Q, that uh, bold lines here. Yeah? So from U to uh, V1, and then here the blue one from U to uh, P1. Yeah? So these two paths yeah, must be the same length. Otherwise, yeah, uh, if one is shorter than the other, then we will have another shorter uh, path, yeah, uh, 
uh, from U to V or from V to from U to W. So this is contradiction. Yeah. So this is must be the same line. Now consider the path uh, P1 and Q1. This is uh, P1 is uh, a path from U1 to V, and then uh, Q1 is the path from uh, U1 to W. W yeah? And we can conclude that these two, yeah, this these two paths must be in the same parity. Yeah. So it follows that P1 uh, Q1 is a path from V to W yeah, of length even. Yeah. So if we combine these two paths, yeah, we have a path from V to W yeah, of length even. Now, if we have an edge here yeah, connecting V with the W, then we will have a cycle here. And this cycle of length out, which is contradiction. Thus, V and W cannot be adjacent. So, we prove that every two vertices in X will be not adjacent. Similar proof can be done to show that any two vertices in Y will be not adjacent. So, that means G must be bipartite. So, we prove these uh, theorems. We come to the end of this section and thank you.